Good evening. Call the meeting to order at 7.01 p.m. Inform the public returning from an executive session. Announce that this meeting is being recorded live by Ray Cam and Ms. Riley. Would you lead us in the pledge? <coughs> The United States of America, and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. Thank you. <coughs> the uh, minutes, please. I'll make a motion to approve as printed the minutes of the regular selectmen's meeting of August 20th. Second. All in favor? Aye. Uh, those are approved. Thank you. Department heads, Matt Tannis from the Health Department on Triple E and West Nile, Matt. Be the shortest update I've had also. Um, so the good part is I actually haven't had any calls regarding positive samples um, in our area since last middle of last week, so that's good. Um, so the second round of aerial spraying was completed uh, about a week and a half ago. I still haven't heard from the state as to what the effect effectiveness was, but I am anticipating that it's going to be positive. Uh, the weather was a lot more favorable than the first round, um, and the, the routes that they took it was much more methodical. So we we'll are looking forward to hearing what the, the overall effectiveness was. And the state's going to be looking forward um, to working with all the health, health agents and boards of health in all the heavily impacted towns over the winter to update their um, arbovirus uh, response plan. So I think the state's actually done a really good job this year um, in being proactive. So um, anyway, uh, no, no additional positive results for Triple or West Nile virus have been found in Rainham within the last week. Doesn't mean that there's nothing here, just nothing in the traps. Uh, but there were two positive uh, Triple E samples found on the Eastern trap last week. So it's still around. Um, and although there have been the two rounds of aerial spraying, it doesn't mean that the threat of uh, Triple E or West Nile virus is gone. It's just the threat's been reduced. So um, resident, residents should continue to use their personal precautions, um, bug repellent, dust to dawn, um, mindfulness like that, until the first hard frost, which is four continuous hours of 28 degrees or below. So it could be a while yet, for sure. Um, and of course, dust to dawn restrictions will still be in place until this her first hard frost at the town, town fields. Uh, Bristol County Mosquito Control uh, after speaking to the director, we'll tentatively end the routine ground spraying September 13th. Um, this is because the nighttime temperatures will dip below generally 58 degrees. Once they reach that temperature, the, the pesticide they use is no longer effective because the mosquitoes really aren't flying and it's only effective against um, actively flying mosquitoes. Uh, however, um, they will still honor spray requests, but the spraying will be conducted during the evening when the temperatures are still a little warmer. So it will only be by request and as weather conditions permit. So I'll talk with uh, further with, with Tim McCrae and the rec department regarding the, the town fields and getting them sprayed. Of course, if there's leagues and like that, if it's not uh, post dust, there may still be people there. So that's something I'll work out with them going forward. But for the next two weeks, they still will be out spraying. Um, I spoke with uh, Bridgewater Rainham Superintendent uh, later last week regarding the evening sports practice and games with the, the school district. Um, he had advised the athletic director to, to take some precautions. So uh, I believe all the kids will be off the fields uh, by 6 p.m. and Friday night football games have either been rescheduled for Saturdays or for earlier Friday. So um, they'll be done hopefully by or before dusk. Uh, as a note, I've gotten some calls regarding deceased birds that have been found on people's properties and, and the roadways and like that. In Rainham, um, it might have been sparked. There was a, a bird that had been tested in New Bedford that was positive for Triple E that was in Buttonwood Park. It was only tested because it was an exotic bird, a Brazilian pigeon, that was part of the zoo. Um, that's why it was tested. The state is not collecting and testing birds for Triple E. Um, if a resident is not comfortable, collecting and disposing of the bird themselves, they can certainly call the Board of Health and I'll go out and take care of it for them. Um, other than that, just as a, a side note, um, insect repellent is also effective not just for mosquitoes, but the same repellent is also effective against ticks. I've seen a pretty significant increase in tick-borne illnesses come across um, the communicable disease, the, the MAVEN board. Um, so I just urge residents to be mindful of the ticks, not just the mosquitoes, especially as the fall continues. The cold weather doesn't kill the ticks. So. 
That's about all I have. Any questions? Good, thanks. Any questions for Matt? No. <coughs> Thank you very much. Matt. You're welcome. A couple things, if I sure. Can, Mr. Sure. Uh, Matt, <coughs> dusk to dawn, that's because most of the mosquitoes are out at night. That doesn't mean they can't bite during the day, but you have most of them out. I was a little dismayed to read something on Facebook that said the mosquitoes that transmit triply bite during the day. They also bite at night, correctly? That's correct. correct. Um, so mosquitoes can certainly be active during the day, and they can bite during the day. They're more active at night when it's a little cooler, maybe a little damper. Um, certainly if you're in a more wooded area, the mosquitoes can be active during the day, but um, they, they definitely will bite more so during the night just because they're more active. But they can bite during the day as well. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Matt. You're welcome. Uh, Mr. Luciano, I know Mr. Donahue uh, had a step out. Are you going to do this under your yep. report? Yes. Okay. Or I can do it now. Probably now because we have many. Sure, that's ahead. fine. That way, if they want to head out, they can. That's a good idea. Thank you. Because I think what, what time the socks on tonight? <coughs> Seven o five. Twins tonight. Uh, thank you, uh, Mr. Chairman. The uh, chairman of the committee, our town moderator, Mr. Donahue, could not make it tonight. He's had a previous engagement, so. It was left to the three of us. I'm joined by Richard Chavo and Linda DeMello to give a summary of uh, what we're recommending tonight to the board. I think the best way to, to handicap this is to start with the timeline and how we got to where we are tonight. Uh, back in April, the uh, former town administrator had resigned, and I was asked by the board to uh, come aboard temporarily uh, to guide the town through a process uh, that would begin the, the uh, uh, initiative to hire a permanent town administrator. Uh, the first uh, step was we had the government study committee, which was already formulated, and the, uh, the Board of Selectmen tasked the government study committee to redo and review the job description for the town administrator position. We did that. Uh, we took uh, and uh, really upgraded the position uh, into a, a new job description that uh, the board approved after submittal with some adjustments. Uh, at that point, the government study committee took a look at the job posting, and we had to take a, what was then a four-page job description and put it into a one-page job posting, which we brought back to the Board of Selectmen, and it was approved accordingly. At that point, the board uh, asked the moderator to create a steering committee uh, to begin the process of hiring a new town administrator. The moderator did that and appointed five members, uh, well, himself, of course, uh, myself, uh, Linda, Richard, and Marsha Sylvia. Once that committee was approved, we posted the job posting in uh, multiple areas, uh, the Mass Municipal Association website, the town uh, website, uh, the Mass Municipal Association trade journal, and it was also picked up by some national uh, journals an app, uh, application sites because we got an application from Las Vegas, New York, Connecticut, Ohio. Ohio. So we know it got out there. So we had some, some out-of-state applications. So we, we don't feel as though we didn't get the word out. It, but at the same time, simultaneous, we were up against at least four other communities that were hiring within the same exact time period as us. So the competition was very stiff. We ended up with 24 candidates. Uh, I was not an applicant because the chairman said I could not work from Fort Myers Beach. <laughs> so I did not apply. Uh, there were seven uh, that we, as a group, f reviewing the 24 candidates, decided to conduct preliminary interviews with. Uh, of those seven, the committee felt very strongly that two uh, finalists would be what we would recommend to the board tonight, and I'm sure my fellow members can elaborate further, because of their extensive managerial and government experience. And one of the things that I found intriguing with both candidates is they both followed two completely different career paths. So you're, if you do decide to go forward tonight in interviewing these two candidates that are recommended, and we didn't rank either one, we didn't rank one and two. They're both one and one. But because of, of the differences that will come out in the interview process, you will have a good choice of which direction, which person you think, 
and which direction you want to see this town move forward with. Uh, just for a brief highlight, because some have asked, well, what kind of experience are you talking about? Well, with Graham Waters, which is one of the names we'll recommend, he was a city administrative officer in New Carrollton, New Carrollton, Maryland. He was a town manager in Coventry, Rhode Island. He was a member of the Rhode Island League of Cities and Towns, vice president of the Rhode Island City and Managers Association. He was executive board member of a municipal insurance cooperative, bachelor's degree from Millersville University, master's of public administration from Penn State. William McKinney, the other finalist that we're recommending tonight, very different career path, but very similar in experience and supervisory of personnel, et cetera. He was, he's currently the governor's appointment, Governor Baker's appointment as director of the Department of Labor Standards for the Commonwealth of Massachusetts. Prior to that, he was the chief financial officer for the now city of Weymouth. He was also the Deputy Administrative Officer in the Health and Human Resources for the Commonwealth of Mass and Deputy Commissioner of Administration and Finance for the Department of Agricultural Resources. Very different career path. BA from Holy Cross, Masters, MBA from Babson College. Town experience in Denham, his hometown, Finance Committee, Community Trust Funds Chairman, elected town meeting representative. So as you can see, very different um, backgrounds, but clearly very um, extensive, as I said before, in their experience in uh, running pers uh, uh, agencies of multiple uh, responsibilities and duties and personnel. Uh, so with that, um, as a handicap, Mr. Chairman, if, through you, if I could turn it over to my fellow members. If you could, just podium. <coughs> I really don't have anything to add. I think you did a great job in putting together what we actually did all that time. So unless you have a question for me specifically, I don't really have any. Okay. Mr. Shivo, anything to add? So let me just say that um, it was, from my perspective, a privilege to serve on the committee. A uh, very balanced committee. Uh, a lot of deliberation I can tell you right now we went through a lot of different you know you know scenarios and I think that bodes well for the town the fact that the committee was balanced that there was a lot of deliberation a lot of discussion um, so uh, keeping in mind that the government study as uh, Gordon alluded to uh, it referenced uh, that puts uh, even a more important perspective on selecting uh, the next town administrator because the duties have really been increased. So there's that much more to consider on the part of the board. As Gordon mentioned, uh, the candidates which have made finalists and are being presented to the board are both very qualified and in different ways. And I think Gordon's made this point very clearly. They both could do the job they don't that they come from different points of view but I think from the board's point of view it's going to be very challenging <laughs> to pick the finalist and so we wish you the very best it's been a real uh, challenge from our part but we enjoyed it uh, we the committee worked very diligently uh, and I would have to say that in addition to Gordon uh, John Dunne who did a lot of work in the background and again, as I, I will just say that it was a pleasure and a privilege on my part to participate. So I wish you good luck with the final decision. <laughs> Thank you, Mr. And by the way, where did that Brazilian bird come from? <laughs> Brazil? <laughs> um, so the, the boards heard the summary in our packets. We've been given the um, applicant's information for the two proposed finalists. I say proposed because we have to accept it. Uh, I want to first thank uh, Mr. Shiva, Mr. Mello, Mr. Sylvia, the moderator, and Mr. Luciano. Um, probably one of the best committees I've seen assembled in terms of collective talent, and we appreciate you coming together on uh, an aggressive time schedule during the summer months to, to put this together, to vet the 24 applicants, to interview seven, and then get us to finalists. 
Um, and my recommendation to the board at this time would be to uh, take those two proposals and put them on the schedule for next Tuesday uh, for interviews, and um, then we can uh, establish a time frame on how we want to proceed after we do those interviews, if that's amenable to my colleagues. Uh, it is, and I would move to do so. I'll second that, but just under discussion. I think you referenced that, Mr. Luciano, but those two were the unanimous choice of all five members of the screening committee? Correct. That is correct. correct. Okay. That is correct. Yep. Good question. Yeah. And I would echo um, to the chairman's comments about thanking you so much for serving in that really important role. Appreciate it. All right. So all in favor? Aye. 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 All right. So that you'll schedule those two? J just to let you know, uh, the official names are Graham Waters from Charlestown. Massachusetts and Bill McKinney from Dedham, Mass. For the, for the minutes. Okay. Thank you, Mr. I'll Lewis try and schedule that for uh, next Tuesday's yes. agenda. If for some reason one or both cannot make Tuesday, is the board amenable to say a special meeting on Wednesday for just the interviews? I'm fine with that if the board is. Okay. okay. That gives me a little flexibility just yeah. in case. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Thank you, Mr. Lucero. Uh, appointments, we have one, uh, Eden Ferguson, who's our library director as an ex-officio associate member of the Historical Commission. Where she isn't a resident, it would be a non-voting position. That's why the ex-officio title. What's the board's pleasure? All in favor? Aye. That's approved. No other appointments this evening, citizen and community input? None? Okay. No public hearing this evening. New business proposed master plan assistance contract. Uh, it is in our packets. Mr. Luciano informs me it has his blessing. Uh, anything you want to add, Mr. Luciano? It looks pretty straightforward. It's a, a proposed contract between the town of Rainham and Serpent, a southeastern regional planning and economic development district, uh, to be the uh, uh, contractor, uh, contract agent for the preparation of the master plan. In the packet is the steps they will take to create the master plan uh, and how they would do that. Uh, the last page uh, is the breakdown of costs uh, by taking the $70,000 that the town meeting appropriated and any additional costs would be covered um, through SERPID in um, uh, uh, different grants and uh, also as part of what they required uh, in spending for our local community on each year. Uh, for example, uh, local technical assistance uh, that were allotted would be applied to this. Uh, so we would not exceed, even though the cost of the final product may exceed the 70000 it would not be borne by the town of Rainham. Uh, so working um, in negotiating this contract with SERP, and I'm very comfortable that they have a good handle on it. They've done an extensive amount of uh, other communities' master plans. And uh, the, I think it's a good, good project that they've put together. All in favor? Aye. It's approved. Thank you. Uh, roadway acceptance request. Uh, my recommendation would be we refer this to the highway department for um, their review and potential sign off. To board's pleasure. What is that? That for Yeah, for a site yes, tech for uh, Nina's way. Debbie. So move. Second. All in favor? Aye. That is approved. Um, Mr. Tag, Lucy, yeah. tag day. Yeah, Debbie's going to come okay. and do the we'll other. We'll do one. skip one for a minute. We have a tag day request. I had that somewhere. Um, here it is, for uh, organization Hope for Children International. The dates in October have been okayed. What's the board's pleasure? Move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. That is approved. While we're waiting on Deb, um, if the board's okay with it, I'll jump to correspondence quick. Oh, Deb, come on in. Never mind. Uh, we have on the agenda the Patriot Energy contract for three-year gas supply. Yes. Um, what happens is the gas companies have been deregulated as far as when they purchase the gas. So it, it still comes through Columbia gas. However, the actual gas itself comes from the different organizations, and they can set the rate now, whereas Columbia gas is more at the mercy of when it's high, you're going to pay the higher price, supply and demand. So this would set us in at, at a guaranteed low rate throughout the season. But we don't even use it in the summer, so we wouldn't be charging any difference. And I think this is similar to what they do at the electrical market, like down the Cape. Correct. Yeah. Correct. Okay. What's the, any questions from the board? Just as a follow-up, I want to thank um, Debbie for her extensive work on this. Uh, she really put a lot of time and effort in. One of the reasons why we thought it was important to take a look at this is it gives us a fixed rate every month. 
straight throughout the year. There's no fluctuation in what our, our planning, our bills will be, so it's easier to plan and budget for. Second of all, although they may deny it, they got a big expense going on in the North Shore. I don't know what's going to happen with rates down the road. At least this contract locks us into a three-year fixed rate amount that we can plan for um, and not worry about fluctuations in the market or, or, or any additional items that may come uh, across the table. So uh, I think we're both unanimous in recommending this, this contract for approval. Any questions from the board? The only thing I would like to know is the fixed rate that they're going to give us, does that equal out at the end of the year as to what we actually pay now? I or is it more than that? Actually, will turn out to be less. If you okay. take the averages that we've been paying, yep. it actually comes out to be less. Good girl. Thank you very much, Deb. What's the board's pleasure? Move to accept. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Thanks, Deb. Thank All right. Any other new business, Mrs. Smith? No. Nope. Miss Riley? No. Okay. Old business, Mrs. Smith? No. Nope. Miss Riley? No. Okay. Town Administrator's report, Mr. Luciano. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Now, let's start off with free cash certification. <clears throat> For use this fiscal year, FY20. It has been certified, was certified on August 21st by the Department of Revenue. I believe this is the earliest in a new fiscal year we have ever obtained that certification. My compliments to our treasurer, Michael King, and our accountant, David Grab, for their hard work on this achievement. Uh, this is really important because it really gives the Capital Planning Committee an early start on available revenues to put our capital plan together. So great work done there. Also, uh, fiscal year 2019 audit is currently underway with a goal of completion by November 1st. Once again, this is one of the earliest dates we have commenced the audit and possible completion date. My thanks to all of our finance team for their work on compiling and completing all of the required documents in a timely manner for this process to begin. Uh, and hopefully it'll be a good audit. But if it isn't, at least we'll have plenty of time for corrective action. Route 138 design, public hearing, was conducted by the Mass Department of Transportation last Tuesday, August 27th. For anyone who missed the meeting and would like to watch it, it is currently being re-shown on the Rainham Cable Government Channel every night at 7 and 10, but it is also on YouTube if you would like to view it on your own time uh, as well. Next Monday, joint meeting of the Board of Selectmen Finance Committee Capital Planning Committee will be held here at the Town Hall Meeting Room on Monday, September 9th at 6 p.m. for a presentation of the feasibility study conducted by the Fire Station Renovation Group. Uh, we'll have a PowerPoint presentation uh, for those at home that can't make the meeting and would like to, to follow along uh, beyond the new screens. Fall Town Meeting will be held on Monday, October 21st at 7 p.m. at the Rainier Middle School. This meeting will be primarily focused on capital expenditures. All articles to be considered for placement on the warrant must be submitted to the Selectman's Office no later than this Friday, September 6th by 11.45 a.m. No exceptions. Did I say no exceptions, Mr. Chairman? You did, Mr. Okay. Chairman. I appreciate your zest. I didn't see that. <laughs> Somebody will be in Monday morning. Uh, upcoming, Selectman's next scheduled meeting will be on Tuesday, September 10th at 7 p.m. in the Town Hall Meeting Room. We are now on a, back to a weekly meeting schedule. Fire Station Building Committee meeting has been changed and is now scheduled for Thursday, September 5th this week at 2 p.m. here in the Town Hall Meeting Room. And the Capital Planning Committee will begin the process of reviewing articles for the Fall Town Meeting on Wednesday, September 11th at 6.30 p.m. in the Town Hall Conference Room. That is all. Thank you. Any questions for Mr. Luciano? Mm -hmm. right, thank you. Selectman's report, Mrs. Smith. Well, I really don't have anything to report other than uh, it has been just a couple of days since Labor Day. Kids are back to school. And I just hope they all have a wonderful school year. And congratulations to them all. And congratulations to all those who have survived the summer. <laughs> Thank you. Miss Riley, anything? Yeah, a couple things. I just got an email from our Route 44 over Route 24 bridge replacement project. Um, they seem to let us know about this last minute. This is effective September 3rd, which would be today. Um, as a reminder, they say Mass DOT's con contractor, SPS New England, has rescheduled the traffic management measures 
outlined below due to the weather forecast and subcontract availability. The new bridge deck placement will now take place from 7 p.m. on Tuesday, September 3rd to 5 a.m. on Wednesday, September 4th. So I guess if you're watching this live, you'll know about it. If it's in replay, it's a little late. But um, the work had been uh, scheduled previously. So beginning at 9 p.m. tonight, the closures will include the Route 4 Route 44 westbound to Route 24 southbound and Route 44 eastbound to Route 24 northbound on-ramps. Detours will be in place during the on-ramp. Closures and rolling roadblocks will be used to allow the contractor to perform the work. For the rolling roadblocks, state police will travel at reduced speeds to slow the traffic flow so the contractor can place the bridge deck above Route 24. It sounds like quite a project, so I guess the word to local residents is stay away from Route 44. Right. <laughs> um, also attended that hearing that Mass DOT had last week, and a little bit frustrating, and I will just mention the comment period is open for 10 days after that hearing. So if anybody wants to send in a comment, they can do through the end of this week. I have the information of who to send that to. But a couple things that were pointed out. Bicycle trails uh, lanes on 138 makes, makes even less sense than bicycle lanes on Route 44. I think encouraging bike riders on Route 138 is not a safety factor. It's exactly the opposite because that's such a narrow roadway. It's going to take away some of the property of the people and the businesses along that route for that. But that's evidently a state initiative that... Uh, is pretty much locked in stone, it seems like. Also, um, the point was made by many at the hearing that the um, Center Street intersection is due to be um, constructed, reconstructed this year, later this year and into the spring, but that's a whole different project, so it doesn't really coincide with this other project, and they don't, it seems like they can't really talk to each other, which again is unfortunate because you don't want something done that then has to be redone, so I mean, um, I, I think I'll just for the heck of it draft a comment anyway and ask them to please <laughs> at least try to coordinate that so that hopefully something isn't done and then you have to redo it after it because I think that, that was makes the general consensus of yeah, the that they exactly. were going to end up doing that. Exactly. And the bike path also, I think Mr. Wyatt made a couple of comments on right. that. And it's ridiculous, the yeah. same as it is on Orchard Street. It starts from nothing, ends to nothing, and who's going to ride a bike on 44 right. anyway? It goes just north of King Philip Street to just south right. of the Route 4. Now, and then the, the, it just ends. So I guess if you're riding your bicycle at that point, you then disappear. I'm not sure. You disappear. What you do. They but, come um, down from some magic place, and they pick you up and move you. Crazy. Any case, beyond that. But you that, can't change the state. The, that's yeah. the state mandate. It has nothing right. to do with us. Right. And it's not federal either. It's a federal project. And the question was asked, is that a federal requirement? But it's not. It's a state yep. requirement. Foolishness is it. In addition to that, as, as Mrs. Smith alluded to, school is back in session, first day. So welcome back to all of our administrators, <laughs> faculty, and staff, and so forth. And our RAVE volunteers are ready to start riding those buses tomorrow. Oh, wow. um, Becky Mello will be among them. And um, we have a full complement, Kara Peters, who's the chairperson for that project of RAVE, and Becky George, our RAVE co volunteer coordinator, have done a fantastic job lining up. There's over 100 bus rides that we have to fill, 14 morning and afternoon buses, uh, the four day for Wednesday, Thursday, Friday of this week and Monday of next week, and we should have a rider on every bus. It makes a huge difference for those little guys on their first day of, of school to give them a little extra TLC, um, which is uh, what RAVE is all about. RAVE starting 38th year, providing volunteers and volunteer programs in our Rainham schools. I don't think I mentioned earlier um, uh, the reorganization of RAVE. Lisa McCoy is continuing as the RAVE president for the second year for 2019-2020 with Linda Texera as the vice um, chair, vice president. Of course, Rebecca George as our volunteer coordinator. And we've got a great list of uh, board members there who are ready. And I should mention, too, I don't think I mentioned before, that at the end of the at an annual meeting back in June, the uh, Shoshana Goshik Volunteer of the Year Award was awarded to Lisa McCoy, RAVE's current president, and the RAVE Award for Exceptional Dedication and Commitment to the Children of Rainham was awarded to our very own Marie Smith. And I thank them then, and I thank them again. <laughs> so again, I hope everyone has a great school year. Thank you. Thank you, Ms. Riley. Correspondence. We have <coughs> communication from a resident on North Main Street requesting a street light. My recommendation is we forward it to the highway superintendent. 
So moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Correspondence from Comcast notifying us that this changes to Xfinity TV services. Turner Classic Movies will move to the sports entertainment package and will not be included in its current service package, which essentially to me means that you'll get a higher bill if you want that. <laughs> and I like that, too. Oh, uh, well. See that? Save your pennies. Save my pennies is right. Uh, the Board of Health did some uh, site inspections uh, at the mobile home park on 138 in Rainham and found some violations for numerous res uh, uh, residences uh, asking for corrections to that. We have no other correspondence this evening, no members of the press are with us this evening. Any emergency business? None. None? I think, Mr. Chairman, before you adjourn, if, yeah. if I may. Um, we have uh, Chris here from uh, East Bridgewater. Um, just wanted to thank him. He's uh, where our veterans agent has been out injured. Uh, he's helped. He stepped in and he's helped some of the Rainham veterans that we've been able to send over to his office um, to help us fill the gap during the temporary uh, leave of our current VA. And uh, thank you. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Right. If there's nothing else, I'll entertain a motion. So moved. Pay the bill, uh, sign the reports and pay the bills. No other business. And I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. Have a good week, everyone.